What's up guys, it's Macron Jones here, MCJ, and I'm back with another video on Power Automate and Dataverse. What we're going to be looking at today is a new action in the Dataverse connector called Search Rows, currently in preview. This action allows you to execute a relevant search on your Dataverse system. Relevant Search is a fantastic search system that has been newly implemented into Dataverse. It's been getting better and better. Um, there's been some previous versions of it, but there is a new version of it, which allows for a lot more querying, a lot better search results, and a load of other cool functions. Um, and this action in Power Automate allows you to execute one of those searches directly from Power Automate and then do something with those results. So let's take a look at it today. I'm in Power Automate have a manual trigger because we're just going to pass in some information to our action. Um, so we don't need anything coming from Dataverse originally. Then we can click our new step and we can go to the Dataverse connector here and scroll down until we see this one, search rows preview. So as mentioned, this is executing a search in the system. Now, if you try and run this without turning on the relevant setting in Dataverse, you're going to get an error message. So if we first go to the Power Platform Admin Center, this is my environment that I'm using for my demo here. We have uh, we've gone to my environment, we've gone to my settings. If I expand product and go to features, there is a setting on here called search. So turn on relevant search. If you haven't got this turned on, it will error and you won't be able to trigger the action. Um, the error message might not be too useful. So make sure before you try this action, you come in here and turn on this relevant search button here. Right, go back to our flow. So you can see we have a few options here um, for what we want. So the first one is a search term. So it says enter a search term, e.g. Contoso, searches, modifiers like booleans, operators, etc. What that means is that we can we can pass in um, specific wildcards or, or booleans or other sort of operators to allow us to narrow down our search term. So for in my instance, I'm just going to search uh, things like Acme but I could put a star at the end and that would act like a wild card for the search term, meaning they would find anything where it starts with Acme, but then continues on with something else. So for, um, so if you want Acme or Acme Limited or Acme something else, uh, it's going to find that. Um, and similarly, there are other types of operators and things like that you can use. What I'm going to do is I'm going to include a link to all the documentation that goes on about relevant search because it's quite in depth in the show in the description below so that you have access to that and you can look at these things in your own time we're going to try and explain as best we can uh, all of these different uh, options in here uh, but i'm going to be referring to my notes as i go through um, because it's quite complex um, the next is a search type um, the search type is enter whether you want a simple or a full search syntax to be used. Default is simple. So what the search type is, is it specifies whether you're using an, an easier search method. So in here, the search term, whether we're using simple things like you know wildcards and booleans, um, or if we're using the more complex query type, which is called uh, Lucerne. L-U-C-E-N-E, -E, uh, where you'd specify full in here instead of uh, leaving it blank um, or putting simple. If you type full into here, um, it will use what's called Lucerne um, query syntax, meaning that you can use things like regular expressions and stuff like that inside the search term, and you can really narrow down and really get the, the right results that you want. But we're just gonna keep it simple for now. Similarly to search term, there is also search mode. So search mode again has two modes. It has the any mode, which is the um, is the sort of simple um, mode where it won't exclude anything, um, where it basically will um, run a query where it'll try and include everything um, if you if you choose any. Um, the other mode you can actually use um, is. Um, so the default is any, uh, the other mode you can use is where it actually excludes results. So it will run 
more specific queries um, if you choose the all mode, A, A double L, so all. Um, if you choose that mode, it will prioritize the precision of the query and bring back fewer results. So whereas um, any mode will bring back anything that kind of matches it, um, all will only bring back the things um, that really match what you is what it is you're searching for. Um, so those are, those are the most complicated parts of this whole thing is figuring out which search mode. When in doubt, just leave by default. Um, but if you really want to drill down into this, you can look through the documentation and find um, how to really make your search uh, really accurate. Uh, the last thing we have here is row count. So we can actually specify, okay, we only want to bring back the top 100 rows, we only want to bring back the 50 rows or something like that. So you can specify this. If you don't specify, it's just on default to 50 anyway. Clicking on show advanced options, we get a few more things. So we get table filters, sort, uh, sort bys, facet queries, skip rows, and return row count. So the table filter, what that does is that allows you to, again, simplify what it is you're searching for. So by default, it's going to search all the tables in your uh, database instance, which might be what you want. But on some occasions, you may not want that. You actually may want to specify that down. So in my instance, uh, maybe I just want to look at accounts. So I'm going to type in here and type account. Um, it is going to use the, the singular, not the plural. So uh, use that in here. Um, the first time I was trying it, I was trying to put accounts in there. It says it doesn't recognize the table. Uh, another sort of like um, quirk of working with Power Automate and Dataverse. Um, you'll notice that this also has the ability to add new items and things like that, and also has a array input. So by switching to the array input, you can see it's just a, a JSON array, uh, and we can add multiple into here, uh, switch it back, we can just put this in through the through the regular um, uh, input here. Um, so we can have account and contacts, for instance, and switch that array and we can just see the updates like that. So that's all cool. So this will, what this will do is this will only look at accounts and this will only look at contacts. Um, so we'll look at just these two tables, no other tables in my Dataverse instance because I've got them here. Sort by item, uh, enter a column unique, uh, a unique name followed by ASC or DSS, DESC. Um, what that means is we can actually sort the results by um, a, a, a specific column or a specific field on these tables. So if you want to sort these by created on, uh, if you want to sort uh, like ascending or descending, you can do that by uh, typing in here something like you know, created uh, on ASC. And what that'll do is that'll sort that, uh, sort it by that. So let's leave that in there. Not sure if that'll work. We'll try it. Um, the facet query, I'm gonna come back to um, in a little bit. Um, it's, uh, and show you how that works. We'll skip over that for now. Um, skip rows, uh, this allows you to actually skip over a number of rows. So if you know you uh, you want to exclude the first, say, sort of say 10 rows, for instance, you can specify 10 in here, it'll skip over that and just return the results after that. Um, and the last option we have is return row count. So we, again, can choose a yes or no to this. Um, and what this will do is this will actually just tell you uh, uh, is separately what the row count is for the number of records that we're returning. So, Let's, uh, let's test this out and see if this works. I'm not sure if this sort item is gonna work, uh, but we'll test it out. That column should be the same for both accounts and contacts. So hopefully, fingers crossed it'll work, but hey, nothing like a live demo. So we'll trigger the flow, we'll save and test it, we'll hit run flow, um, we'll click done, and the flow runs successfully, yay! So I didn't break anything. Cool, uh, right, so it's returned the results, um, it's giving me a total row count of six here. Uh, I know my facet results are zero here. And if I click on the show raw outputs, um, I can see it's returned all these results. So we've got some headers here and we've got this. So it's giving me a search straw, which is interesting. Like it, this is how accurate it thinks it is. And it's giving me my search term in, in these brackets here. Um, and the first thing is kind of figured out is uh, we've got a parent account of Acme, which is what the search term was, Inc. So that's bringing it back. And so right, okay, we've got uh, we've got this, and we're going to sort these by um, 
created on. So we've got contact first. Uh, that's the first one it brings back. So the contact is related to Acme Inc, which is where it's hit this search term and why it's included in this. That's really cool. Uh, and then we continue going down and the second one we actually have is the account. So again, we can see that the hit or the, you know, the query that we put in Acme is in the title here, in the title of the name field this time. So uh, so again, we've, we've searched and we've um, specified the order of this. So we've got this contact first number of the account, which is a bit unusual, uh, but it's just it's split, sorted on the created on order. So that's really cool that it's done that. Uh, and then we can continue down and we can see we've got all these different um, uh, results here. So we have accounts, we have uh, more contacts and stuff like that. Uh, so we have one account and, and five contacts. So that's really cool. So that's given us a list of our results that is in an array that we can work with on that. So we can say, right, okay, from the list of uh, search results, maybe we put that array into a table. We um, put that table into an email and then we send it to the account manager to say, hey, we've triggered this flow. Um, here's, the, here's the search results from uh, what we're trying to do here. And here's an email uh, based on something. So maybe you have something like uh, when a big order comes in, find similar orders with um, the same products on or something like that, send that to the account manager so they can take a look at what we're doing. So that's really cool. Right, so I'm coming back to faucet um, queries because again, it's the only other thing that's a little bit more complicated. So a faucet query, um, I did not know what this was. <laughs> I had to look this up. So a faucet query is a way to, um, again, narrow down the search, but what it does is it generates a separate array. So you can take, the re take results and take fields that you want and just put them in that array. So the problem is that when you um, when you have an array, you get a bunch of fields, those fields contain uh, multiple properties inside them. And therefore, when you want to do something, you get a big apply to each and you've got loads of fields and things like that. And sometimes it's, it's not that easy to work with. So what a faucet query does is it allows you to drill down into the results that you'll bring them back and just put those in their own separate array, which is super cool. So um, in the faucet query, we need to specify the field that we want to bring back. So in this instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put contact and I'm going to type full name. Uh, so what that will do is that will look for the contact records that we're bringing back and bring back the full name. Doesn't work exactly like that. And this is actually why I want to show you it just so you're aware. So contact, full name, it's going to bring back just the full name of the people in that faucet query. So where uh, a faucet query. Do you want the faucet query? Watching too much American television. Uh, we'll run the flow again. Um, we'll save and test. And we will run flow. Click done. And if we expand this, we can now see that faucet results or faucet results have a bunch of things in here. The first one, though, is Acme Inc. So it's actually brought through the name of the account as the first result. The account isn't a full name, it's not a contact, but it brings that through anyway, which I thought was really interesting. I think it's because full name and name are very similar and it's just combining those two together. So this value is actually name and not full name. Um, so just be aware that there are some kinks and some, some uh, quirks with this. Uh, it is still in preview. Um, so do a, do a little, um, you know, uh, wide berth. Um, so this one, so the next one is Alfred, uh, Alfred Pennyworth, uh, Pennyworth. Um, again, that's the full name. So that's fine. That's a contact. 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 So those are all fine. So it, the only, the only sort of slight thing is if you're doing this over multiple entities, if you're doing this over multiple tables and you have a field that's kind of like another field, you may get those included in your faster queries as well. It's the only thing to be aware of, um, but it's a really powerful tool to allow you to just get out some pieces of data rather than it being in these big uh, blocks, these big arrays here. Um, and then we have it, that is search rows uh, preview for Dataverse. 
Um, so it's super cool, super useful. Um, it really takes advantage of some of the new querying language and things like that. That is part of Dataverse and part of Dynamics 365. Um, I'm going to put all the notes and the, the Microsoft docs in the um, in the description below so you can understand how the queries work and things like that so you know what part to put into watch query and, and what all of them do and you can decide which ones are best for you. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. What, what will you use this for or will you use this? Let me know in the comments down below. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, could you drop a like and maybe share it with a friend? That would really help me uh, grow this channel. If you haven't already, Click that subscribe button and stay up to date with all my latest videos. I'll see you next time.